It's a team, man. It's a team. One guy can't do it. It takes all of us. Come on, a little enthusiasm. Let's go. In 1986, the Giants faced a number of challenges. Their loyal fans held high expectations. The media put on added pressure by agreeing with those fans. And as with any Giant team in recent memory, there were the ghosts of frustration. Ghosts that haunted the franchise for over 20 years. They're tackling the guy. I'll tell the umpire. Tell the umpire to keep an eye on All right, all right, all right. In 1986, each of these challenges were met. The ghosts were buried along with opponents. The prognosticators proved correct, as the Giants did indeed play with a tenacity equal to their talent. The loyal fans were rewarded with a series of sounds and images they will not likely soon forget. The Giants' 1985 season ended on a cold day in Chicago. But as they walked off Soldier Field, they began to take their first steps on the 1986 road to the Super Bowl. If there's one thing we learned from the Chicago Bears last year, is that the intensity level they played at was extremely high. And we always thought we were an intense team, I think. And uh, we found out from them that uh, uh, we have to step it up just one more notch. Blood, sweat, and tears reflected the intensity. Reaching the Super Bowl was not a goal. It was a mission. No man better epitomized the single-minded sense of purpose than number 56, Lawrence Taylor. reestablished himself as the game's most destructive force. By earning the NFL's most valuable player award, he backed up the bowl preseason predictions of his head coach. I know Lawrence Taylor very well. He just absolutely has one of the strongest wills of any human being that I know. I knew what he was going to do because he told me. Lawrence Taylor's intensity was infectious. The Giants pounded opponents with a front line featuring pro bowlers Leonard Marshall and Jim Burt, rookies Eric Dorsey and Eric Howard, and old reliable George Martin, number 75. The Giants' second line of defense was equally formidable. Reasons and Carson, Hedden and Hunt, rookie Pepper Johnson and the much improved Carl Banks, number 58. 
rounded out the NFL's most feared group of linebackers. Linebackers at heart were the secondary of Hill, Kennard, Williams, Welch, Collins, and Patterson. The threat to this defense was teamwork. Where there was one player ready to strike, there was another. And another. And another. While the Giants' defense personified the word intensity, some players on offense redefined it. I tell you, he's a stone face, that Bavaro now. You know what the hell he's thinking. I'd hate to have to fight that son of a gun. In his second NFL season, Mark Bavaro set team tight end records for yardage, receptions, and stubbornness. In a key early season contest, the Raiders got a full dose of the Giants' versatile attack. The victory was fueled by Bavaro's ferocity, Lionel Manuel's finesse, and Joe Morris's footwork. In 1986, Morris continued to shatter giant rushing records as easily as he shredded opposing defenses. In a crucial two-week stretch, Morris carried the full weight of the giant offense. His 360 yards rushing and four touchdowns made the difference in back-to-back -back victories over Washington and Dallas. Victories that gave the Giants a share of the NFC East lead. The cheers, however, did not always reach the ears of Phil Simms, the man who spent much of his early season searching for receivers who just were not there. Competitive Sims even tried to lend a helping hand to his ailing pass catching core. That proved frustrating. But adversity is no stranger to Sims. Here's a guy who's had a fight through adversity probably as much or more than anybody else with a, with a press that was, has been on him and the fans have been on him. Uh, but he had a fight through it by himself, and I think that uh, you know, he, he willed himself into being an outstanding performer. Time where I felt the offense didn't have a leader. There were just a bunch of guys out there playing and, and trying to uh, not lose a game. They didn't have uh, one person to, to really tie them all together and to lead them anywhere. Phil has really taken on that responsibility and he has done a very good job. In Minnesota, Phil Sims, with the help of Bobby Johnson, engineered a last second victory that proved to be a turning point in his season. Fourth and 17, two receivers left, one on the right. McConkey comes in motion to the right-hand side. Sims drops back to the 40. Sims throws. Completed, he's in. Yes, at the 30-yard line. First down. 1986 was a year when the Giants dedicated themselves to raising their own high level of intensity. No man wore a more intense look of determination than their quarterback and leader, Phil Sims.
championship teams do not wait for opportunities. They seek them. Motion toward the middle by Vance Johnson. Elway is looking for a target. Goes out to the right side. It is that the George Martin. 30, 45. At the 45, Elway takes it and breaks the tackle. 40, 35, 30 for Martin. Martin to the 20. Martin to the 10. He's in. What a run. What a run. Hey, George, have you ever run that far with the football? <laughs> Never? You got to be kidding with the ball. <laughs> Never. <laughs> you know, I was really happy for him because, you know, we've been through a whole lot together. And I just, I like to see that happen to um, an old guy, one of the old guys, you know. Snap, spot. No, oh, they're going to throw the ball. They're going to get a touchdown if he holds it. Touchdown. Harry Run Carson. To Harry Carson. The old man did have fun. The Giants' only concession to frivolity displayed a serious side of Bill Parcells. In 1986, he was less of a coach, more of a motivator. His style ranged from one-on-one -on -one sessions with his biggest stars to giving a sense of identity to the men in the trenches, men he referred to as the Suburbanites. The origins of the uh, Suburbanites really began with, with Coach Parcells. I know he fancies himself an expert on personnel and not just their playing abilities, but their backgrounds as well. Chris Godfrey, I guess, is the philosopher of the crew. Carl Nelson's an engineer. Bart Oates is an aspiring attorney. Billy Ard's a stockbroker, and, and I'm a car dealer. So uh, all suburban type of jobs, and, and Coach Parcell started labeling us with that. Each victory was celebrated. Each victory celebration was short. Nope, this time of year, it's whoever plays the best next week. Simple as that. Sims has the ball. Sims throws long. He got Bukaki. The Giants began to take on the look of a champion with their last second victory over Denver. Snap, the spot, the kick, the shot, it is good. Do I feel pretty confident? No, we got a ways to go. In San Francisco, the Giants look like a team of destiny with their stunning 21 point second half comeback. It's not over. A lot of people think this uh, race is over. I thought it'd go 16 weeks, and now that just makes next week's game much more important for us and, uh, because we have a chance to win the championship next week, and we got to do it. In Washington, the skins were smothered with four sacks and seven turnovers. It was a total effort from the kicking of all pro punter Sean Landetta to the recklessness of the special teams. To the play of unsung heroes like Tony Galbraith and Phil McConkey, number 80. Sims is back at the 25, looking for a target. He's going end zone. Touchdown! And what a catch by Phil McConkey in the back corner. Double team. The Giants wrapped up their first title in 23 years, finishing the season with nine straight victories. Their march to the playoffs was so inspiring that some fans decided to set their story to music. Little Joe Morris keeps moving the chains. Harry 
Giant fans were doing their own Super Bowl shuffle. Giant players, however, were not. Even in the spotlight of the media glare, their profiles were low, their priorities clear. Until their mission succeeded, there would be no commercials, no posters, no Super Bowl shuffle. I think that we have a workmanlike ball club. I think we have a workmanlike coaching staff. I think that they had it in their minds ever since they lost the Bears game last year that there was only one thing they were interested in is going to the Super Bowl this year. And I think they've kind of put most of those other things, those fringe things and such uh, show business type things out of their mind. We're going to try to win all the ball games we can and not worry about the other things. Those things are falling into place. And, uh, you know, we don't really worry about videos. If we don't have a lot of guys who can sing anyway. <laughs> Sims is looking for a target. Sims, end zone, high stop of our own. In the playoffs, the Giants let their actions do their singing. What Giant fans got was the beauty of a Mozart symphony combined with the jagged edge of a Bruce Springsteen concert. The 49-3 conquest over San Francisco was the most lopsided playoff win in Giant history. Takes the hat off to Russo on Sims, looking end zone, he's going to run, lobs it, complete touchdown, Lionel Manuel. Come on, get him, get him, get him. And so the Redskins will be going for it here on fourth. The fans are going to get up into it now, and they're going to make it tough for Schrader. Schrader hands off, and Rodgers is stopped. Damn! Keep the intensity and stay alert. Know what the hell down it is. Know what the situation is. Get in the huddle, get the call, and play hard. <laughs> Rolls of toilet paper. Pieces of cut out program. Newspaper. One year after their bitter walk off Soldier Field, the Giants posted a 17 to nothing shutout for the NFC Championship. On the far sideline. Seven seconds to go, and the Giants will be checking their reservation for Pasadena. <laughs> content, content. No, we're not content. No, we if we going there. We expect to win. That's what we're going there for. We're not going there to lose. Oh, I know that. Or going to Disney World. That's not what we're going there for. I don't have to motivate this team for this game. Are you kidding? This is the Super Bowl. <laughs> If you can't get ready to play this game, you ought to take a hike. In Pasadena, long inhibited emotions spewed forth. But by game time, grim battle faces were back on. He's in the end zone, he got him! Fight me! What pressure! Pitch, far 
Lester turns around, back to Sims, on the flea flicker. Sims is looking way downfield, he's got to receive it, complete, down to the 10, 5, touchdown I believe. I know they are marking at the 1, fill in the pocket of the 1 yard line. Well, we expect Super Bowl 21 was a microcosm of the season. A day when they came from behind. A day when Phil Sims stood tall. A day when the Giants let few opportunities slip from their grasp. A day when the defense left a lasting impression on a quarterback. A day of guts, glory, and uh, Gatorade. The tough guy giants. In triumph, the hardened faces of intensity receded, revealing them as simple men at work who were really boys at heart. The rest of your life, man, nobody could ever tell you that you couldn't do it, because you did. Yeah.